Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies, and today is our final day of doing Children of the Corn movies, which I am eternally grateful for, because I am sick of the Children of the Corn. But I do wish that I had been a Children of the Corn uh, person for Halloween at one time. Because, what do you mean, last year? No, like when I was a kid or something. What? Instead of Casper or whatever I wore. But Safi, no Children of the Corn came out when you were a kid. I know. <laughs> but anyway, that would have been fun because not that many people wear that. That's why I really liked that, uh, that last movie we saw, a Scream movie, where they were... Uh, in New York and all these people were dressed up for Halloween and they had the coolest masks and costumes and I saw a couple children of the corn people so I thought that was great <sighs> so anyway because you never see that ever. We're, we're reviewing I've a, never seen that. a new release movie now Sophie yeah, this, this is, is a new release can you believe it it's, it's a, a new release children of the corn movie and in fact let's explain We've been waiting to review this movie since 2020. <laughs> you know, they posted a production picture where all the kids from the movie were standing in a field together and they were saying, like, Children of the Corn just finished filming and we did it at the specific time. And, like, it, it was really weird. Like, it was like, okay, is there going to be a, a good Children of the Corn movie to come out? And then what do you know, Safi? They released the they released the movie in twenty twenty in like one theater in Florida or something, or maybe like two theaters somewhere in America, and then nothing. And it was really irritating because we were excited for it to come out. We were gonna review it and drink a uh, corn soda and eat other gross corn foods and do a commentary. And thankfully, <laughs> we never had to do that because, oh, that sounds terrible. And then finally it came out this year, and I guess they shelved it, and then Shudder was like, oh, well, we'll release it because we'll just release anything. <laughs> so finally it came out, and... It's funny because all these other reviewers have already reviewed it, even though we've been waiting to review it ever since 2020. But, you know, we had to do the rest of the crappy series first, Safi. Well, that's okay. At least we can say we've seen every single one of them. <laughs> that's something I never wanted to say. <laughs> Children of the Corn. But they just aren't very good movies for, mo for the most part. Well, it's like... A lot of them just seem like the studio should not have okayed said movie to be made. Like, let's see, let's like let's count how many of those. Cause, I mean, that's one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, like, seven out of eleven movies should not have really even been allowed to be made. <laughs> so, there you go. Like, that kind of explains the quality of the series. Right, Safi? Yeah, and it's pretty bad. I I didn't mind this one that much. Except oh. there were a lot of... This is the problem I have with these <laughs> movies. They're... When you... When you read a story or you watch a movie and it has a story, you expect to hear at least the basics, basic components of the story Yeah. to help you further understand what's going on and so you can move along with the story and then you come to the climax of the story and then you go to the end. And the beginning of the story was kind of forced it was I, I don't even I don't understand it at all it's just like it was like uh, it, it was like you have a really beautiful yard and then you get these weeds 
<laughs> like these few weeds that are like different colors and and thicknesses and sizes and shapes and they just pop up and you're like you got to pull them out and it's Saucy. just like they made no sense it's 2023 people like weed now <laughs> no yeah. that's not what i'm talking about okay. it's, it's just uh uh well i don't know Bar marco is really good at uh telling what happened he doesn't like me to do it because i i exp i put too much detail in it but uh Basically, there's at least, oh, what would you think, about four or five main characters, two really, uh, one really big main character, which there's is a, a big main character which is a and a smaller main, main character. But then there was a, a she, younger girl who so was happy. pretty much a main character, too. She so. is a typical final girl. She is like final girl to the T. Except they didn't have any typical, like, oh, I won't do drugs, or I won't have sex. Like, they didn't have any of that in the movie, of Not course. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, it well, was basically, it was interesting, it was basically about at least part of a movie. I don't know how much of a part, but in one of the ingredients was the corn was bad. Well, it, it's, was, it started off, and... It was like an inciting incident, I guess you could say. And you have this little girl, and she's talking to this, this child of the corn, and she's like, I hope you didn't spend all night in the cornfield again uh, making out with the corn. And he's like, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he grabs a knife, and he goes Rambo on the, the adults inside this orphanage, and then instead of just charging in there and taking him down uh, like fucking Dirty Harry, they decide to gas the orphanage. Uh, so all the children... the most bizarre solution to something like that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's really in weird. In any movie or real life or anything. All the children in the orphanage die. And then Eden is sitting on the outside watching... And in, in theory, it sounds like it could be a creepy, scary sequence where it's like, you know, she's listening to all these people like uh, drop dead after some of them were just being massacred too. Like, it sounds like a scary sequence, but no, it's it's treated almost like a documentary mm -hmm. where they they kind of show like the the gas and and then it's it's over. It's like, okay. I, and I just, that was so, that was shocking, really. And it was almost stupid. It was like, what is? And then when you watch the whole movie, you were thinking like, what does that really have to do? It's just an excuse. It's like, and and we'll talk about too. The guy who made this movie, he's written quite a few terrible, bad, <laughs> unnecessary remakes. Mm. He wrote the Thomas Crown Affair remake. Oh. He wrote the Total Recall remake. Oh. He wrote the Point Break remake. Oh my god. You know, he is the king of remakes. Of, of unnecessary remakes. You know, instead of making a remake, you should have just made a sequel or an Australian Children of the Corn uh made. Because just imagine, Safi, like, you think the children of the corn are bad? Just imagine how bad the Australians of the corn would be. <laughs> like, like you know, you've seen Australian movies, Safi. They can, they're really rough. They can get really, you know, nasty. They love alcohol. Uh, you know, like, it, it could get pretty scary. I they mean, really, I, the ones I've seen have been really, really good, and uh, and then yeah. uh, of course there was also Crocodile Dundee, which is not Ugh, really a that's terrible. Well, the first one and the second one, I like the rest of it was not good, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, wait, well that was that's more like a comedy. It has nothing to do with drama and well, like they they and, shot this movie in Australia, which, which is, is why really I said bizarre. It. I and don't understand that. I You've just, got the entire Midwest, <laughs> Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska. It's so irritating <laughs> when they do that because it's like, 
God, it, it, this is not. This is terrible filmmaking. Is that like, where he's from then? So maybe all th- of these remakes have been shot so. in Australia? It sounds like an Australian name he has. Kurt Wimmer. You know, that sounds mm-hmm. like a, an, an, uh, you know. I don't know. King, I, King of the Vegemite. I would never have known that. I, I would just, have preferred to just see an Australian Children of the Corn spinoff movie. Like, see a... Uh, like, because you've I've seen before in these Australian movies, they'll show these Australian hillbillies, and they'll show these crazy people, and they're creepy and ugly and scary, and I just feel like that could have been really cool to make like an Australian Children of the Corn, but instead, oh no, we're gonna make this, ugh, it just it's a bad movie. And so that inciting incident, it's basically part of a really rushed exposition where the main characters, the kids in this town, Rybolin, Rybolston, Riboflavin. I don't know. Royal Ralston. Is it is it Rylestown? Rylestown. And that sounds like an Australian city name. That doesn't sound like an American city name. Well, yeah. <laughs> Who knows about that kind of stuff? Nobody ever knows about that. And so, the, the, the movie starts off with the biggest problem in this movie, besides the fact that it sucks, is that it, it doesn't show, it tells. And they start off and the kids are talking about, like, Oh, I'm going to go home later and my dad's going to beat me again. <laughs> and then they're talking about, like, you know, the adults in this town, they've really done a bad job with the corn. It's gone really bad. And it's like, this is terrible dialogue. This is what you don't do in movies. You don't do this telling and not showing. And there's so many times in the movie where he chooses to tell and not show. Yeah, that's true. Like, there's a part, and and you can say something, I just wanted to add this in as a prime example. There's a part in the movie where they're going to hold a fake trial thing at this, this city hall with all the adults, and then they go there, and Eden says, well, we already had the trial, and, and we already did everything, and all the adults are, are done with, and it's like, we should have seen that trial. You show, not tell. We should have seen that whole trial sequence. At least something of it. Like, I mean, that's, uh, that's it's, stupid. What, what are they trying them for? Being bad parents? Uh, letting the corn uh, get... I, and I don't understand why. That I don't, if the corn was so messed up, how could it, be, how could it even grow? I mean, really, when you looked at it from afar, it looked like normal corn. I'm like not a growing corn. in the summer. I'm not a corn expert. Well, they showed the leaves. And this is another thing. They really did not coordinate the showing and the, uh, like Tell- Marco was saying, the yeah. telling, because they did show the corn, and it looked like it had, like, this powdery stuff all over it. And we have, we lived in this house for 34 years and just recently had to leave because they tearing it all down and they we had a cornfield out there every other year they what they did they rotated it was corn one year and then soybeans so we've seen corn a lot and it's nice and green and the leaves are shiny i've even worked in a cornfield it was very hard work and i got nicked on the back of my heel with a cutter to cut down weeds and that was painful and uh, it was very hard work and but anyway but the corn leaves are very shiny and and this was all like i i know that of course in the fall the corn starts to get brown because they're going to harvest it and then they they just mow it all down and uh it it yeah they do look yellow because yeah that's the normal progression of the corn it's ready to be harvested the corn's all ripe and ready to go but this corn was like, 
it would be like the corn you would see in July, which is, well, at least where we were, is six feet tall and green and shiny and healthy looking. And this corn was all, the leaves were like, they had this brownish powder and the corn, I don't know, it, I, I thought it looked pretty normal. I mean, the corn itself, they peeled back and the, the kernels looked what, how they would look. I mean, I didn't see anything different. Oh. The leaves looked uh, really odd and the plants from afar looked odd. So I don't know. Supposedly, they did not, the adults who were mad at the adults because they did not take care of the corn. And then there's another time where the kids are in the field and there's another kid and he's standing on this plank and he's supposed to jump oh. off the plank and, and, and die. He's way up and, high. And, and, and the man girl, which we'll talk all about the children of the corn, uh, the man girl she says, you've been sentenced to death for treating your dog badly and letting him die a slow, horrible, painful death. And it's like, why don't you show that? Well, why aren't you just that. telling it? Because she's or saying... she's shown the dog. Yeah. Maybe she, in distress or something, which I don't really want to see that either. But she, but. she said, like, this kid, he just watched his dog lick poison and then die like that's so fucking stupid it's like it, it, there's stuff is, happens in this movie and what is she, what, what is she everywhere at everybody's house everywhere and sees everything that goes on i mean i don't know <laughs> that was another thing i now i pick it apart it's just i thought well see when we talk about main girl we have two main girls we have the girl who's like 18 going to college well which she was and then we have this young girl who was there when those kids were gassed at the orphanage and all yeah. died. She watched she, the kids get gassed. She's younger and, and she's evil. They kind of did the thing that I wanted them to do last movie where you have the children of the corn and she's adopted by like a quote unquote good guy in town. And it's just too bad that they didn't do anything with that plot at all. I mean, they had this supposed plot where this uh, I guess he's a pastor um, and actually I looked and I saw he is a guy from Inspector Gadget 2 oh yeah he's Dr. Baxter mm. from Inspector Gadget 2 remember him Safi I thought he looked familiar but he, he helped Inspector Gadget with his missions and he created the female inspector Mm -hmm. who's his rival mm -hmm. and that movie was much better than this <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty good but, well uh, I thought the evil girl was really good well he adopted evil girl he adopted her and, because she's an orphan I thought this could have been a really cool story where you could have had like this thriller suspense movie where it all leads up to the kids turning evil and taking over the town and she's you know her relationship with this father but no it's just like automatically the kids have all become killers Which overnight not true that just i don't just don't believe that would happen it's like they ate their wheaties and then the wheaties made them uh or they ate the corn the diseased corn and which they already did that in part two and yeah. it was much better done in that movie where they yeah. actually explained that and made it a plot point. Mm -hmm. But the main girl, she was really good. I thought she was really good. And she Eden. was young, too. Eden was the best part of the whole movie. She was fantastic as this character, uh, this Isaac Jr. <laughs> and I, I didn't think that she would be because I just thought it was kind of weird how, like, it's like, oh, after all these movies, all of a sudden it's like, what's our big idea? Well, let's have a girl be the leader of Children of the Corn. But she's really good, and she's actually, I would say, out of the whole series, if I had to rank oh my Lord. the Isaac Jr. characters. <laughs> Isaac Jr. characters. <laughs> she, is, <laughs> she, <laughs> she is number two. Like, you have Isaac... And then you have her. 
Yeah. And then you have Eli from part three, and then you have Keanu Reeves from part two. And after that, it's like, fuck, fuck all those pieces of shit. <laughs> and they're not kids anymore, so I'm, that's why I'm calling them pieces of shit. Because they're, they've all grown up now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, um. She was really good. I really, thought she was. I, she was really, I mean, but I wasn't thinking of her in terms of something supernatural. Now that doesn't. She wasn't. That, that doesn't happen until the very end. No, Maybe the, the last few scenes. Don't get to that yet. Well, Sorry. I know, but the thing is, she just was like a homicidal homicidal maniac yeah and i guess the question i had and i hate to bring this up was the fact that she in the end were in the middle where they were getting rid of all the adults of course because that's the thing about children of a foreign is get rid of all the adults and the kids rule and get rid of them any way you can and uh she wanted to get rid of she left the, the preacher as one of the final people to get rid of and it sounded like he sexually abused her or something. Did you get that? He physically or sexually abused her. Well, I thought that I thought, she I thought they were something. I thought they were trying to say that, but I just it was so very subtle. Subtle. It was like many it minuscule was subtle, to com- which I wasn't really sure. Completely, completely like you know, I don't even want to consider that a plot point because they never showed anything like they. They they didn't do anything. They they didn't do anything with this relationship where, you know, at the beginning of the movie you have the main character, she's gonna be the main bag person, and then this guy adopts her and it's like, Why don't you show that? Why why are you just like having it be this movie where the kids walk around? They say the adults are bad, and, and then they have what? And these are all of these kids carry weapons. Yeah, they constantly they carry weapons of sorts, and then the adults are just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. you and know, like this is like a bow and bow and arrow. That's one weapon, and then of course knives, and it's not the sickle thing. I you don't see uh, yeah, you a, do. a lot not not compared to the other movies where everybody has a sickle. It's uh, all kinds of different weapons. It's almost like whatever they can find. And um, anyway, she, um, I don't, you know, I, I, I didn't know if it was supposed to be some kind of abuse or she just thought he was a loser. And, uh, you and she thought he was acting like he was holier than thou because he, he adopted her and... Uh, and like she didn't have any respect for him. You can't. You just can't say anything no, because, because they, there's, they, no, there's no explanation or any sort of like, you know, like not that we need, not that they should be showing anything on camera, but but just like anything, like just you don't just say things and then not like show them. Like that's a a golden rule of storytelling, and they hardly show anything this whole movie. I mean, it, it it's really crappy. It's really bad. It, you, you know, like, I'm sure that Safi likes it because well, I like she... I because of the... I like the villain part because I thought... She, villainess. I thought she was really good. She's the only good thing about the whole movie. Her and the man girl. Yeah, uh, she's... But specifically Eden, uh, the villain. She is the best thing about the, the movie. The adults are like nothing. The adults are so bad that, like, they should be taking acting lessons from her. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how bad they were. <laughs> well, it's funny because we just watched this other one yesterday. Revel or, wait, what was it called? Re- Runaway Revelation. Junior? Oh, Runaway. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's, no, yeah. wait a minute. I thought it was Revelation. No, it was Runaway. Revelation right. was part Before. seven. Right. Oh, what was I going to say? Well, anyway, the, they had this girl, and we talked about it. She had a yellow dress. And she, she was She wore awful. a yellow dress throughout the entire movie. She didn't she do did, anything. She did terrible things, but she was no person to follow. It was like she was on her own. And this girl actually, and that was another thing that was very curious, why these kids, I mean, because this was not a supernatural thing. She had no, there was no supernatural thing until the very end. But the kids, why were they, why were they following her? Um, why would they kill 
other children. Like they're, they're this kid with the dog. I mean, it sounds terrible. We don't know anything about it. And they called it Walk the Plank and had this board. I mean, it was up like at least 12 feet, 18 feet up off the ground. And um, I think it was attached to a uh, some kind of a tower thing, maybe like a, 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 win, a one of those uh, weather vanes maybe or something and I mean it was high up like that and and the, the kid was like well the dog licked some poison from a trap that I set and I was just like I don't care and it's like it's what what is, what, what is this what is this like what has this got to do with I mean the corn which they're very concerned about because that was one of the main threads it's just showing that she's corn. she's gonna be leader of the corn I guess and, so and she really likes the queen from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Which... I thought that was... A, she was working a puzzle. And uh, this was after all those orphans got killed. Which, of course... Why did they do that? So, what was the deal with, like, the queen from Alice in Wonderland? I don't like, know. Was that some sort of, like, an idea of, like, you know, part of the genius about this movie is going to be that Isaac Jr., she likes that, she likes Red Queen. <laughs> like, was that part, was that part of the pitch, Safi? I don't know. Like, okay, so there's this girl, her name is Eden, which is like a biblical name, and she likes Alice in Wonderland, specifically the character who likes to say, off with uh, your testicles, uh, head, and... That's her character. She's yeah. she likes the Red Queen. Isn't that amazing, Safi? It's like that was another thing that was odd, because she was uh, wearing a wig. Well, that she had a cape. She had red cowboy boots, kind of a reddish set of cowboy boots. But the thing is, I mean, that's not a. Uh, that isn't something that I would expect kids around there to read and on their own and I that was another thing I thought that was bizarre that she was familiar with Alice in Wonderland so and I know that Marco when he was a kid he had two parts in an Alice in Wonderland play at school and it was a lot of fun but I mean Marco doesn't live in a cornfield area. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't live in the suburbs. I, w- <laughs> I was a caterpillar, and I was the king of hearts. Right, he had to do it because, you know, they didn't have... Because, no, it was because there was this other piece of shit, and he just had to have the Mad Hatter role. And Marco really wanted that. And, and she would not give it to me, and she made an excuse... And said that she would not give it to me because I cannot do a British accent. And it's like, well, I don't know who the fuck, a little kid in the fourth grade, I don't know what kind of a kid in the fourth grade knows how to master a foreign accent. And it's like, well, you're an acting teacher, why don't you teach me how to do a British accent? Like, that's, that was so re- retarded, but she... And that kid didn't have British accent. I don't remember him. He tried to, and it was terrible. And we have it all on tape. And <laughs> and, and it was funny, because she knew that it was bad. She knew that the piece of shit did not deserve the role. And so she bribed me uh, by giving me two roles. Well, he did really good, and it worked out. It was a bribe. And, uh, but she, anyway... She knew she was full of shit. This wasn't, uh... I mean, like I've said, I've lived in a small town. And I know what it's like, and, uh... I just don't see the Alice in Wonderland thing at all. I don't see it because there's, like, no other attempts in the movie for Alice in Wonderland referencing. Like, there's no other no, not sort of... For nobody. Nowhere, nobody. I guess the main girl, you know, the final girl, she could definitely play Alice in an Alice and what but I mean pretty much any girl could if they if they did a good job. Like but I guess maybe they meant for her to be like Alice. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't I think so. I was just thinking about it was really 
it was a really beautiful puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, and she was doing it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking yeah, that looks like the Red Queen and Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> and it was. And uh, anyway, the other girl, the main... The final the, girl. The final girl. She was she a man a girl. girl. She was a man girl, and she, she was she very... She was like into science. She was very typical, and and uh, but she was good. And I thought that she was another highlight of the movie. But what I just kept thinking about in regards to her was she is exactly like Lisa Simpson Uh, from The Simpsons. She looks like Lisa. She acts like Lisa. The only difference is, is that she doesn't talk like Lisa Simpson. And I guarantee you, if they made a Simpsons movie... She should be the person playing Lisa Simpson. Because the whole movie, I mean, she does everything that Lisa Simpson would have done. And her hair is just like her. I know. See? See, Safi? I never even thought about that. That's all I thought about the whole movie was, why is Lisa Simpson (laughs) starring in Children (laughs) of the Core? Oh, my God. I never even thought about that, but she did look a lot like her. Yeah, beat that, Sophie. She just didn't have the voice like Lisa. She doesn't need to. It's she, like live she was action. she very into... Did the Flintstones movie have the voices of the li- of cartoon character? Oh, they tried, but, you, you know. They didn't. Not the women, anyway. They have fucking John Goodman. They have fucking, uh, what was that fat woman? The fat woman in the blue dress, oh. the... Rosie uh, O'Donnell. <gasps> God, she's the worst. It, she's the absolute worst. Oh, the Rick Moranis was. Oh yeah, he was, was Barney. Barney. That's right. And uh, Kyle McLaughlin was the bad guy. Oh yeah. And Halle Berry was the bimbo bad girl. Yeah. And that was a pretty good movie. They should do that with the Simpsons, and then cast Lisa Simpson from Children of the Corn. <laughs> Yeah, hmm. but she was like into you know Lisa Simpson's into the more of an intellectual like you know science and all kinds of things and of course the music thing. But this girl wasn't into music, but she was into science about the corn. And uh, I guess the main thing you now after this orphanage thing, which was a horrible situation. It could have been if they portrayed it properly. Yeah. And uh, the corn corn was bad, so the people in the town decided the best thing to do would be just to mow it all down, burn it all up, and what, start anew? No, they were going to give the land to the government so that they could build, like, whatever they wanted on top of the land. Oh, well, and so the daughter was saying, now wait a minute, that corn could be, they could, it, it could be saved, not not that corn, but I mean, they could do something different. They don't have to do that. Yeah. And that's why the other kids, the, cur- the bad girl and the other kids didn't want to do anything bad to her at first because she, they didn't want the corn to go either. And that's what they were really angry about. And they, uh, and it was like they didn't have a say. And then some, some of the townspeople were saying horrible things to them, and so horrible t- things to the teenage girl. It was really cartoonish. Like they had yeah. this whole sequence where, like the kids are like, "Wait a second, we should have a say too." Yeah. And stuff, and then and then the adults are like, <laughs> and the, and they're just acting like these cartoonish characters. The dad is telling one of the abused children, he's like, "Uh, you just wait until I get home later. (laughs) You know, because he's implying he's going to physically abuse him Mm -hmm. like he likes to do all the time. Uh, And then, like, another person is, like, saying something. And it's just so, like, again, it's like telling, not showing. This cartoonish simplification you have these kids and they're like, we want to say, and then the adults all are cartoon characters. That was terrible, terrible sequence. And basically, that incites Eden to start the Children of the Corns rampage with uh, 
with the help, of the reluctant help of Lisa Simpson. And Lisa, she does this, the Simpson thing, and she contacts uh, this reporter, and she wants the reporter to come to town, and they're going to hold a mock trial with all the adults. And then she goes home, Lisa Simpson style, and she confronts her father like he's Homer, and she's just, it's so hilarious, just, well, like, he's her character. Not like Homer, though. No, he, he, he's like a cardboard cutout. He doesn't have much of a... He's been, he's been he's better. He's dimensional he, he was, he's been better in other things, like, it was surprising that he was so terrible in this movie, because he, you know, he was in Fargo season one, remember he was the brother? Oh, no, I didn't know. He was the brother who had a lot of guns, and then mm. the main guy, like, frames him, and, uh, with the, I can't remember, or, I can't remember. Well, that's okay. But, but he, he, he was good in that, and so it was surprising that he was just so one-dimensional in this movie. He, what he did was, he spoke up for the whole town about how they wanted to get rid of the, just get rid of the corn for good. And so he became public enemy number one. And then the daughter was trying to plead with him, saying, no, this just isn't necessary. You you don't have to take this step. It's, it, and, uh, and then I guess the mother, her mother was stepping out on her father. Yeah, that was another telling, not showing sequence because they showed weird the, the mom really weird. the mom was on a street the, the, the sidewalk and she was leaning into this guy's truck talking to him and flirting with him and then the brother and sister are like, should we do something? No, we shouldn't because that's between her and our father. But the thing was, was that, like, I almost thought at first, is that their father in the truck? Like, is she just, I don't know, like, I, I didn't no, understand that, no. that at all. No, it was her boyfriend. But apparently she's cheating on him yeah, with some guy. Yeah, she's cheating on her husband. I didn't the, get that at all. It was just an, another unnecessary, was, I guess it was to show the dysfunction in their family. It didn't have anything to do with child beating or abuse. It to was, show... All adults are bad in this town. Yeah. Except they have for some bad situations going on. Except for Lisa Simpson. And well, Lisa Simpson is an adult. She was she was in real life. I bet. Uh and and then the reporter, she never comes to town, I guess. They never followed through on that at all. I mean, I was expecting, oh, did they kill the reporter? Did they sabotage and just tell her not to come? Like, no, they they never explain. Like, the reporter just doesn't show up because all adults are bad. It, you know, it was just very one-dimensional and very um, cartoonish. But luckily, throughout the whole movie, you had two good things. The, the monster. The No. The, you didn't <laughs> no. like the monster? That, that was one of the worst things about the really? movie. I uh, like the monster. I thought it was finally something. I am Groot. Yeah, that's what it looked like. A big Groot made out of corn. No, the two good things were <laughs> the final girl and Eden. Those were the only two good things in the whole movie. I'm surprised you didn't like the monster. It looked terrible. The, it, he who walks behind the rose. And that's another weird thing. They didn't even say he who walks behind the rose. Not until about that, the very end. They just call him he who walks. Oh. And it's like, what the fuck is up with that? Like, is that another smart alecky idea for this reboot pitch? Instead of calling him he who walks behind the rose, let's take out the behind the rose part because that doesn't really have anything to do with him. It's like, yeah, it does. He walks behind the rose of corn so you can't see him fucking uh. another bad thing about the movie was the music the music there was no music was there there was like this dramatic generic action thriller music and the whole time i just felt like it's worthless. if only somebody could go into the original file of this crappy movie delete this crappy music and then replace it with the music from the first movie. 
Yeah, it was, uh, music was uh, almost non-existent and worthless. Yeah. Which I hate to say that, but it really wasn't. Even good. You know, Marco and I are very uh, aware of music because he was in band, and I played the violin, and I was in orchestra. And so, I mean, I did that all through my, all through school, and to, even through in college. And, I, and then I played pan pipes, and played Latin American music. So, I mean, that's how come we're so aware and we think of the music. And music, we talked about this before, it adds a lot to a movie. Even if it might not be so great, it can still add something like Jaws. That's music that adds to it. Or Psycho. That's music people, and I've said this before, people might know the music and never had seen the movie but they know what it's from because it's so iconic. Now those are very exceptional cases, but even like Halloween, that is iconic music. And I'm not saying that you have to have an iconic piece of music for children in the corner. I think you should, but it just doesn't work out that way. But maybe that's why with these movies, it goes up and down and it's mainly down in terms of quality. And this movie, it was just F. It, it was just bad. It wasn't, like, the worst thing in the world. Like, I could watch it again uh, if <laughs> if I were oh, forced yeah. to. Well, yeah, because you know why? They had it's... a great monster and they had a two oh. girls who were really... And you were... He was really thinking that, you know, they made this uh, Isaac, which just not wasn't an Isaac. It was this completely different thing. And uh, the, the evil villain was a girl, and she did an excellent job. And then you have this other final girl who didn't do such a bad job herself. And by the way, final girl did not live. So there is no the final girl. Uh, Sophie, that, that's, that's like a stinger. That's, that's like a stupid stinger that happens like, it, well, we'll I talk about that part at like the end. That. Yeah, I didn't like it either. I thought that was retarded. Because everybody died, except her, well, her brother was still living, I guess. Uh, because he turned, because he got mad, she was going to go to college and leave him there, and he wanted to leave too. And was so a, he was getting, he's mad at her. The corn is alive. <laughs> Remember, nothing dies in the corn. Yeah, but the corn did die. Except because, for yes, this we, franchise. Because at this, uh, at the end, and I don't care, it's about time for the end. But we anyway. have to go through everything. Like, they kill all the adults, and then Lisa Simpson, the, the whole movie is so repetitive too. Where Lisa Simpson sees they're going to do something bad. She kind of tries to get them to stop. And then they don't stop. And she's like, no. And she's like, oh, no. I want to save Homer in March. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and she has the same look the whole movie. She, she does. The whole movie, she has, like, this worried look. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I guess she should be worried in this situation. But it was just so funny because... Everyone else in the movie was like just plain and average, and she was the only one like yeah. acting, like her and Eden, and everyone else was like. Did you get that, Safi? Yeah. I was I was pausing so you could say something, not so you could just be like. I was yawning. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Um... Wow. So we have the thing, we have the same old thing where all the adults, they get rid of all the adults. I was expecting for a lot more of the movie to just be about the kids planning on killing the adults and planning on being corn children. I didn't think they were just going to start killing adults like 20 minutes into the movie. Like it was very rushed the way that the, the kids just automatically, they're all killers overnight. They all played too much Call of Duty. They became killers. Well, it's funny because it reminds me of some kind of story that was out when my older, older son, oldest Story? Son, uh, a story. Story? That uh, people didn't want their kids to read because it was about killing adults. And here we are, children of the corn. That's all it's ever about. It's about a monster in the corn, 
and the monster has varied over the years and over the films and uh, and sometimes it's not even really a monster, a visible monster. It's the corn rising up in the air in a line like, a, you know, when you have uh, the dominoes, they're all lined up and then you knock them and they all go down one by one. So you have the corn, it's just like that the monster comes, it knocks down in this pathway until it comes up in a real big, and then, woo, big explosion or a big wave. It's like a wave, I guess, a big, like a surfing type of wave, and it comes down oh. and captures all these people and kills them and, you know. But So it's been a very, in this one, it was so hilarious, but... Um, I don't know what else to say about it, but it, 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 was it's, it was just that, that that's what they're all, every single one is about killing all the adults, and uh, technically, I guess that girl was 18, so the way they've had it in the past movies, when you were near that age, you had to give yourself up and sacrifice yourself to the corn guy. <laughs> So, and so I guess they weren't going to let, let her live, but I thought she was... Regardless. Gonna, yeah, I thought she was going to get away, but... And, and, and then, near the end, let's finally get to that last, I guess, last 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a back and forth between her and Eden, mm -hmm. where she's trying to outsmart Eden, and then Eden's like, no. And we finally see the core monster, which is really unfortunate, because earlier in the movie some of the like the only effective like scary things were when you just got like hints of what was behind the corn like they had these couple of creepy moments they ha they were like two seconds long each and that was like kind of effective I guess but nothing really in this movie was scary and then finally we get to seeing the corn monster and it looks like Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. It really does. It's it, hilarious. It's, it's a terrible monster. But it opens up into big jaws that are like it's, as big as a car. It looks like something from a really bad video game from the early 2000s. But the rest and, of it, the appearance of it running in the rows and you know, stomping or whatever... I like it's, when it's far away. Yeah. It looks okay far away, but up close it looks like uh, you're playing PS2. It's not very really good. got a slice of Papa John's pizza, and <laughs> you're, you're re playing a video game you rented from Blockbuster Buster. And, <laughs> and, it, it, and then she confronts the corn monster, and then she goes back to confronting Eden, and they have this whole gas, gas off where... She tricks Eden into letting her do a cigarette lighter, and then she blows up the cornfield and kills Eden in the corn, and she gets away. And then her brother is in the movie, too, and she gets away with her brother, and you think, Yay! At least she got away so that she can go off doing boring final girl things. No, she and was going to college, but I don't know how that was going. That's to a very boring final girl thing, Sophie. I mean, practically every final girl goes to college at some point, and mm -hmm. it's like that's that's just expected at this point. Uh, or they they're just in an apartment somewhere, and and then they die, like you know Alice and Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, and. <laughs> But then, no. Like, they ruin that. They totally ruin it. And they have this stupid-ass fucking post-credits stinger, if you can even call it post-credits, because it happens before the credits start. You know, the screen turns black, and then 30 seconds later, they come back, and they show the final girl, Lisa Simpson, and she's <laughs> she's walking in the corn, and all of a sudden... Eden pops up and she has been possessed by the corn monster <clears throat> and she kills the final girl and turns the final girl into corn and the, the corn grows again that was really dumb and it looked terrible too I mean yeah. that looked really bad it was very sloppy what'd you think of that Safi? Well, I didn't think of it as a post-credit scene. I don't know. I guess you're 
you know something else is going to happen, or you think probably. And it's called a stinger, and it's something mm-hmm. that, you know, you could take it out, and it would have been much better of an ending. Like, yeah, something good happened at the end. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even though it's just a really simple, really bare-bones, unnecessary movie. I'll say it once, and I'll say it again. They need to do a Children of the Corn series, like a, like a Ryan Murphy type of series, and they need to have this girl, Eden, and they need to have Isaac. Well, Eden's probably going to be, if it, this was shot in 2020, or maybe 2019 into 2020, so she's, I don't know. She's she's got to be in it. She's got to be in it. If it's Children of the Corn, she's got to be in it, and Isaac's got to be in it. Yeah. Because she's now established with the series. She's good. It's just too bad that nobody else is going to see the movie and then figure out that she is pre- pretty good. I mean, the character was perfect, even though it was like, you know out of all the things they could have done like what were the ideas like I didn't really see any ideas that were any any worthwhile to making this movie Mm-mm. to making this remake it reminds me of Point, Point Break remake you know mm-hmm. they released the trailer for that movie everyone said this looks like a piece of shit nobody wants it and then the movie came out and it was exactly as shitty as everyone expected. And it was some stupid thing about these these bank robbers are stealing the money and then jumping out of helicopters and and giving the money to poor people in foreign countries. And it was really stupid. And I was like, wow, I'm so glad I didn't watch that movie. Like what were they thinking? That that's the common thread with Children of the Corn. What were they thinking? Yeah, I, in those movies, all the ones that you mentioned, I don't think they need to be remade. Speak the, up, Sophie. You're I, a, the, you, the the movies that you mentioned, like uh, Point Break and all these two other, you mentioned two others. I don't Total think they, Recall. Total Recall. I don't think Thomas those, Crown Affair. Those didn't need to be remade. They are very good movies, and they're I'm not sh- that old. I'm sure there's others too. I mean, Kurt. The, the I don't know, but I I'm like Australian guy. And I just wish why didn't they just have an Australian Children of the Corn and somehow have a link to the United States where they and because they showed this before. And one of the earlier movies we watched, where they had the corn, it was imported to another country. I don't remember what it was, and they were standing there shaking hands, and it was it was the one it, uh, where it was grown in Chicago. Remember, well, and the he, family got this guy is not Australian at all, so oh. he, he doesn't even have that excuse. He's German. Okay, I thought that name sounded German. Yes, he looks at Thomas Crown. Oh, with Pierce Brosnan. Why would they do that? That's such a that's terrible. I don't recognize any of these other movies as being remakes that I can no, see, but no. apparently there's twenty twenty one. So there you go, Safi. Oh, did he remake his own movie? I don't know. Oh, the sequel. I was going to say, oh. they had Law Abiding Citizen twice, and I was like, oh God, did he remake his own movie? That would be interesting. Well, people have done it before, like Alfred Hitchcock. He took a really good movie, and he made a mediocre movie with Jimmy Stewart. That man who knew too much crap. You You didn't like that one? No, I, I like the original. Oh, I see. Yeah, the original was good. And he remade it. Really? Huh. Well, so anyway... What's your food review of Children of the Corn? This is really hard. 2023. Um, The movie that was shelved for three years because they knew it was bad. I would say... um, I would 
would say it's like a bag of jelly beans. Uh, for me, anyway. Uh, and there's there's two kinds of jelly beans I really like. There's the red ones, and then there's the black ones. The black ones are licorice, and the red ones are cherry. And then uh, I just bought a bag of jelly beans because it's Easter. They're the basic, they call them the jelly bird eggs. And, uh, you know, the other ones are okay, but they, and I feel like you can equate them to this movie. It's Children of the Corn. It's the same old story. Kill the adults. Have a corn monster of some kind, which has been different every single movie. And um, then you have two, in this one, you have two good female actors who have main roles. They have the villainous, and then you have the good girl, I guess you she whatever the and, final girl well marco says the final girl and that would be the black jelly bean and the red jelly bean and um i guess you would say the black jelly bean <laughs> if you want to say uh it was evil and black you know that's, oh. that's licorice it's good <laughs> and then the a red jelly bean is like sweet and so, cherry so, so those, that's the good girl. those are your favorite flavors yeah so that would be yeah. I, I don't know what else to say because uh it's just I, I really am sick of this i just wish that if you're gonna make a movie make a movie and do ever marco said it about a hundred times during this review <laughs> show not tell this is not a book a book has uh, the burden is on the writer to put good words, succinct words, and tell a good story, have good characters, have a good plot, maybe have a few surprises. And there really isn't, you know, there were, weren't any real surprises. And you know, if you've listened to any of our reviews, that's one of the things I like, I can like about anything, is if there's a couple of surprises because those are what you would call unexpected things that happen that you would never in a million years have thought they would happen. That was like the Squawker uh, R.L. Stein book we read. There were a couple surprises and they weren't overwhelming, but they were just enough to make the book really interesting and you wanted to read more. You wanted to know what happened at the end. How was he going to end the book? This movie you can't wait for the ending to come because you you don't like it. You don't respect it. And that's the thing with these movies that don't what do what Marco has said the whole time. They don't they they don't show, they just tell. And it's that's what video is, showing the art of showing. That's why what special effects are for and 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 drama people acting and horror and comedy and they're showing that's what actors do they show because they um with their face and with their acting and what's going on how they feel about it what they do in the situation and you just don't have that in these movies and to and also it just doesn't, to me, they're just, you know, they're just little horror movies, but they could, they just make a few tweaks here and there, and it would actually improve the movies. They wouldn't even have to do major things, just make some tweaks, but they don't even do that. Why? Why don't they do it? I don't know. Is it laziness? Is it inability? Uh, not understanding what you're doing. What is it that they, why can't they figure out how to make a good movie? And it doesn't, I mean, like we read this book, we've seen, te like I've been watching Monk. That's a, a, what is it, a 40 minute, and you know, because they have to factor in commercials. 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes worth of TV, it's uh, episodes. And those things are about a thousand times better than any one of these movies. And it's an episode. And what do they do? I mean, they think and they, they make and they show. They don't just tell. And so, I mean, why can't they do that? So it's just, it's irritating. But so, but uh, because I like those actresses, I thought they did an excellent job. And I like the corn monster. 
I really did. I, it was kind of funny. I was thinking of the exact same thing of Groot. Yeah, you like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I like the uh, second one. And uh, and I noticed that Chris Pratt, if you haven't read, he's going to be the next Superman. And like, no, he's not. That's what it said. What are you talking about? They are, going, they are casting him as the next Superman. <laughs> what are you doing? Yes, they are. Oh, I not. just read it yesterday. No, sorry. I thought I sent it to you. James Gunn is casting a young Gunn because he would not hire a Henry Cavill for some reason. Which and is so, asinine. Sorry. Because he wants young actors to play all the characters so that you know they can kind of like age with the movies. And that, you know, he can start from scratch. Oh, he, God. He would not hire Chris Pratt, somebody I thought he did. I thought who's they had almost a 50. Of him. He, no. I he, don't know how old he is. He's playing Mario, and that's bad oh, enough. That's, yeah, well, I've he's heard about that. He's doing an American voice say. for Mario. I don't know. Which nobody wanted. <sighs> I know. It's just, right now, they're having a problem making movies yeah and and one of the biggest problems just in talking with that issue is it, it's almost like pick a name out of a hat and they have a hat and that's they the same ha- old names they have 10 actors they have 10 actresses and they shuffle the hat around and they pick a name out of the hat it's the same old and names. it's like oh we're doing a franchise movie shake 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 okay chris pratt will be playing Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's what they do. They just, it, it, it's embarrassing. It's like, why don't you just hire people who are right for the roles? Like, why, why do you do this, like, forced casting? Like, it, and, don't, and don't have a fit about what, about what Mark was saying, because he's not meaning anything bad. Let's get Denzel Washington to play Franklin Roosevelt. This is how ridiculous some yeah. of the stuff has been. I mean, come that, on. That's really? what they do, and that's what they've done. They they've done it with like uh, medieval characters for British dramas. They've casted uh, tokens to play the characters, and you know that's what they do nowadays. And it, it's all the same thing. Like tokenizing a character is the same thing as like hiring Chris Pratt to play every role in history. Like th- those are the same issue because you can see that. They don't cast nowadays based on talent. They cast based on other things behind the scenes. Like, people complain about, like, you know, Harvey Weinstein and people like him uh, getting whatever in exchange for giving actresses these roles. But all these casting decisions nowadays, like with Chris Pratt playing Mario... That type of casting decision is like just as bad as like hiring an actress based off of something that doesn't have to do with her acting. Like, so it's yeah. all the same issue. Yeah. Well, so, why, why well, don't I get to give a food I'm, review? I'm waiting. I was just going to say, what's your food review? It's not the Bacon oh. Ranch McCrispy. Oh, God. Marco, <laughs> everybody, in case you're interested, Marco ate a bacon. What is it? A bacon McCrispy? It's a bacon ranch McCrispy. Sandwich at McDonald's today. It's a bacon ranch McCrispy. Crispy. Yeah, which is what? Chicken with uh, bacon, bacon and ranch mayonnaise, dressing. or ranch dressing, and uh, pickles. And, the, and? It, and that's it. Well, how was it? It was pretty good. I give it a B minus. Really? Maybe a B. Wow. It's just not as good as Wendy's chicken sandwiches when those are good. <laughs> Which yeah. is is never nowadays. So. Which I'm I'm really you know I, I I hate to do that to, but but I was hoping that it wasn't going to be good and then Marco would use that as <laughs> well, it seemed like it could have been. Terrible, yeah, and I was expecting it, for something bad from it. Which I applaud for these restaurant, the fast food places, to keep trying different things because there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, when you just do the same old, same old, well, some of that's good. It would be nice if Wendy's. We've already talked about this. The the uh, 
frosty was still a frosty, which it's not. And one of, uh, of our commentators actually said that it's not just our Wendy's. It's around the country or it's, it's the attitude, too. The fact that these fucking Wendy's employees, they hand you a frosty and then they hand you a straw. It's like, God, even you know this shit's trash. Like... Well, even it's not a frosty. It's it's a shake. Even you know that it's not working right. Like this is bad. Like you could at least say, "We hope we get the frosty machine fixed soon." Like at least say that and just stop deceiving. Pretending like De- that this is right because yeah. I mean, I'm older, and I had to work really? to Wendy's, and when you got the frosty, we both went to Wendy's. But you, there's no way you could even <laughs> sip that through a straw. Ever. No. And it would it would hurt happened. your mouth. I don't know what would happen. Because I used to do that as a kid and there was one specific time and I wouldn't even get like a medium, I would get a small frosty in those chubby yellow cups and mm. I would put a straw in the frosty and I would try to suck it out and I couldn't no at, at all. No way. And and I'd be like, What the hell? It would hurt my mouth. And then I'd take off the lid and eat it with a spoon. Or I would kind of... Use the straw to take the frosty out and eat it off the straw. No, I didn't do that. I did and, that. And so, that's what happened. Like, but now, you can just stick a straw in and, oh boy, there's your milkshake. Yeah, so anyway, just as a little uh, when, side, you can, if you want to have a bacon or crispy ranch, bacon when, or crispy, you... <laughs> Try it, you might like it. When do I get to give my food well, review? Well, go ahead. I was, I was really thinking you were going to do that. I was, no. I've been re- anticipating. If it were good, if the movie were good, pretty good. Yeah. Well, I, I was meaning it was, might be bad. Well, it's, it sounds not good. It's tough because, it really doesn't deserve like a ter- a terrible rating, like a terrible disaster, like. Not going, with those two actresses, I don't think. Going to going to Frisch's Big Boy and getting rotten bacon in a oh, sandwich. Oh, God. It's not like that level of bad, but it's still bad. I would just say, like, we have all these Chinese restaurants around uh. here. And there's this one specific place that Safi, uh, you know, it's like, it's almost like we're being forced to go to this place by Safi and everyone else and it's called Timmy's Walk and it's terrible it's awful i gave it a chance 5 times <laughs> and each each and every time i ordered something different and each and every time it was trash and the last time that i got it i can't even remember what i got it was terrible i think it might have been teriyaki something and it was it was just really like just not good like the elements were cooked well but it was not a good dish and it was gross and I didn't even eat the whole thing but the egg roll was pretty good the egg rolls are good the egg roll is an i'm just going to call it an eden roll and the eden rolls at other chinese places they're not, good. they're not very good so they're very one dimensional the only thing that timmy's walk that has that's good is their eat and roll yeah and so like marco said he's eaten five different dishes yeah the, that's quite a bit first i was like okay i'm just gonna get the generic thing i get chicken lo mein yeah. and and then the next time i got like orange chicken and then the next time I got something else. <laughs> and every single time it was gross and disgusting. And I was like, I'm, I've had it with Timmy's Walk. Well, we don't go there now. I like their eat and rolls, but I don't like anything else. We go to China Walk. And that's like the children of the corn franchise in general. Is, is like just in terms of, I wouldn't recommend people watch this franchise. Because it was a nightmarish experience. You know, it just hasn't been, it's just been really disappointing. I would recommend, if I had to recommend movies from the series, I would recommend parts one, two, three. I would recommend uh, Runaway, the movie we watched yesterday, and uh, that's it. 
And if you want to laugh and have like a drunk commentary night, watch the remake and just laugh at how bad it is. Oh, God. Horrible. Horrible. Other than that, don't watch any of the other ones. It's no. a waste, waste of time. Unless you want to see these two girls, the bad girl. I mean, she is really good as a villain. Well, she can just be cast in a better movie next well, time. hopefully. Who knows? Um, but so... That is our food reviews, and if you were if you, if you like this video or whatever you want to call it, give it a thumbs up and come on and become one of our subscribers so you can comment too on what you've heard and if you've seen any of the movies, what you liked, or if you didn't like any of them, or uh, you have a suggestion about a series that you've seen that you really liked a lot, and why. Well, somebody does want us to review the Prom Night movies. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I've never seen any Prom Night movies. I saw ever. the first one. I haven't that's seen it. any. So, we might be doing that sometime. So, anyway, goodbye, everybody. Bye.